We often work on projects with a lot of details. What's the best way to manage them? There might be hundreds of details that we have to manage. Hi, I'm Jonathan Pickup and welcome to my video. So today I'm going to have a quick look at creating details. Now I'm currently writing a manual for my user group for the YouTube Live if you want to join my YouTube Live or if you a subscribe to my website you'll find the manual when I present it. So I'm going to go through simple ways of creating details. Today we're just going to look at a couple of really basic ideas that I use but I'm going to create a more detailed movie if you're a YouTube member. So first of all let's have a look. So these are individual viewports. If you don't set up these details as individual viewports you won't be able to create the unique identifier that is the detail number and you won't be able to back reference it back to the sections or in elevations where it needs to be back referenced. So what do I do? Well I often import information from consultants and information from manufacturers. So if we go back and have a look at the design layer you'll see there's my detail and it's in amongst a lot of other details. So what I did have on this project was a lot of similarity between the detail but differences in cladding. So for example we've got a detail here which has got a particular a cladding system to it and this detail here is really similar but it has a different cladding. So I could copy one, place it over here, then I could update it for the new detail and for the new cladding. How did I make this? This is a group. If we look inside I've got a group of pieces. So what did I do? Well I took the other detail, I grouped it all together, brought it over here as a copy, then I could manipulate it. Now the big change here was the change in the flashing and the new cladding that I put on. If we look at this cladding we'll find out that that's actually a symbol. And so that's another strategy I use is to often have a series of 2D symbols that I can use to build my details. So one of the things you can do is to import details from a manufacturer but the other thing that's really important is to have a series of objects that you can bring in or a series of symbols that you can bring in to create the detail you need. I've got a library of these objects. I call them detail components or detail parts. And you can see I've got a whole series of them here. Let's have a look at them. And there they are. It allows me then to quickly create and put together a detail. I've got my sash, I've got my corrugated metal, and I also have some details already drawn, like this for example, where I've got most of the foundation detail already there, and I can import that as a complete symbol. It doesn't always work but often it's a great start and I can then explode that and start to use it. So let's have a look at what I've got on this layer. Now you might notice that I actually have a lot of information on this layer and up here at the correct elevation I actually started to draw sections through the building at 1 to 5 scale so that I could get the correct relationship between floor levels and materials and steel work for example. I needed to draw the steel details and setting these at the correct elevation was so useful. So if we zoom out you'll see that my zero line is down here, there's zero there, and so I drew these at the correct elevation so that I could then use the elevation and dimension my steel and give the elevations of my steel work so that I could actually give the exact top of beam the correct elevation so that the steel manufacturer could create the steel that I needed. So that's just a quick introduction. The way I do it often is to have a single layer with all of my details on it. It's not the only way and so in my webinar we're going to look at three main ways of creating details. Storing them as symbols, complete, creating a library as a, as a layer of symbols that we can import, then having a, a library of parts so that we can quickly create the details that we want to make. So if you're a subscriber to my website, don't forget to register for the webinar. If you're a member on my YouTube channel, don't forget to look at the membership posts and you'll find a link to the webinar. If you're not already a member, become a member. Join me each month for detailed webinars on how to do the stuff in Vectorworks. See you later.